Hey guys, welcome back to the live stream tonight. We are talking about clever storage hacks and solutions for a DIY van conversion. Let's pull up our list here. So this is what we're going to go over. Uh, a couple links on the left-hand side. Now, some of these are links to specific products that I like. Um, there's no affiliation with anything on this page. Um, just cool links for you guys to click on, help you out with your van conversion. So a couple links go to some specific products, and then some are going to be Amazon, and then some are going to be stuff that I found on the website that kind of encompasses what uh, we think is a good idea. So over here on the right-hand side, you'll see that we have uh, vanbuilderhq.com. If you click on this link that we'll provide, we've got a walkthrough of each one of these. So all of these topics that we're going to be covering tonight are located on our site and gives you a little bit more uh, detail about each one of these topics. So it breaks it out for you. And then what I'm going to do in this live stream is, again, walk through these links on the left-hand side. That way you guys can use this as like a cheat sheet to go through and start putting together your DIY van. So the first thing I want to show you are uh, collapsible shelves. So if you click on this link, uh, Adventure Wagon, now I've talked about Adventure Wagon in the live stream a lot as far as products go. Um, the van that is, it's outside, it's actually not in the shop right now, it's parked outside the shop. It has the Adventure Wagon interior conversion kit in it. Uh, what's nice about that is you can buy components that just snap right in and you can go on your way. So in our article, we talk about the collapsible shelves. And uh, if we go back up to the adventure wagon, these, uh, these are not shelves, obviously, but they're collapsible bags. So if you need to collapse them, get them out of the way, you can actually go in here. I wonder if they had a picture of that. So inside this bag, there's that track system that I've showed you guys before in another video. And they have these uh, little plastic and metal L track, uh, things that can secure the, uh, the bag to the L track. So you can just unscrew four of these and the bag comes out completely and you can collapse it down. And so this was, because uh, the collapsible shelving system that we talked about in the article here, uh, it's a little bit different, but the first thing that came to my mind was the Adventure Wagon mule bags. So we'll show you a collapsible shelf here in a second. Um, it's really more of a, like a fold-up shelf, and it has uh, marine hinges on it. So we'll show you that in a different link. Because a couple of these uh, sound the same. So, for example, shoe organizer, the back of the seat, or shoe holder. Um, they're pretty much going to be you know nets that are holding some type of material in a certain location under the bed. I mean, not the bed, but the van. So you can have like shoe holder, shoe organizers, and then this mesh pouches. We'll talk about it here in a second. It's pretty much, they're all the same type of product, but they're just located in a different section of the van. So we'll show you a, uh, like a fold-up shelf that'll help you with extending room in the kitchen. Um, I'll show you that. Let's see, that's right here. So where it says fold-down table. So we'll, that's what we'll talk about here in a second. So the next one we have is the sink cover. So you may have seen these. They're typically cutting boards. I mean, they can be plastic as well. Um, sometimes they're even glass because the Dometic sinks have like a glass top that folds down when you're not using the sink and it uh, allows you to have that area back in your van. Uh, but one sink that seems to be really popular, I really like it. Um, you can find it just about on any site, you know, Amazon, um, I'm on Home Depot right now because the pictures are actually pretty good. Uh, so you see this piece of um, 
Uh, I think you get different tones. Like this is more walnut. I don't think it's actual walnut though. Uh, but you can have this and not only can you use it as a cutting board, but it covers the sink. So if you want to have some, if you have some dirty dishes in there and you're having some people, you know, come in the van to hang out for a bit, you can just cover it up. And like I said earlier, you know, it allows you to have a prep surface. So extends, not only does it extend the prep surface, but again, it covers up the sink. And then this one actually has some more uh, add on. So it has like a little drain. So if you want to rinse off, rinse off vegetables and stuff like that, you can. So this stuff gets pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to open up the storage capacity of your van. Um, everybody has probably bought one of these at one time. Um, the magnetic knife holder for my Ikea. Uh, there's tons of knife holders. You can get some at Harbor Freight and stuff like that. But Ikea has a nice, clean, um, I think this is like a stainless steel finish, but it has a really strong magnet behind it. So a lot of van lifers like to put this in their van. Um, I don't have one in my van, but if I had one in my van, I'd probably take the knives down, put them in the drawer, take my trip, and then whenever I get to where I'm going, I'm going to settle down for a minute, I'll put the knives back up there. Some people say that they actually drive with the knives and there's no problem, but not not too not too sure about that. I'll have to pass on that one. Um hidden shower. So, I think a hidden shower is uh highly debated. Um is it one that's built in the floor? Is it one that kind of folds down like this uh Tetra van flooring? This thing is really cool. Um I actually considered this for a build that I'm doing, but um, it's very it's, it's expensive, but it's it's pretty it's pretty neat because it has a nice clean aesthetic. You know, it's clean and up out of the way. Doesn't use a lot of room. Um, the only thing I'm hesitant about this product is the drain. Uh, so it actually these. Um, I need to get a different pointer for you guys on these streams. Those are the channels that the water comes out of. And it goes into this channel right here at the bottom. And then that channel goes into this drain that then connects to, you know, wherever you're disposing of the water. Um, but I think the... Uh, the drain is really small. It's like maybe a half inch. So the the water pressure you would use, you'd probably have to use more of like a military style shower. You know, just rinse off really quick, soap up, rinse off again. Because if you had a lot of volume of water, I'm not sure that it could evacuate it that fast. Um, but again, I haven't used it, but I wanted to show it to you because this would this is like a nice high end. You can buy it. It's ready to go type of product for a hidden shower. Um, more Your more typical hidden showers are going to look like uh, this one right here. So just like a little, little you know, bath area. Um, I'm considering doing this for the spec build that we're working on other than the full height shower because you get to save countertop space. So, for example, this one again, you see the countertop is actually moved up out of the way. So, not only do you get, gain countertop space, but you're able to still put like your uh, portable toilet inside and you're able to store um, stuff in here. So, you know, maybe you weren't going to, wintertime, you're not going to do, um, you know, showers or something like that. Maybe you have your winter jackets and stuff like that in here. That sort of thing. And then the other showers are ones that are built into the floor. So they're recessed. So that's a hidden shower. It's recessed into the floor. Um, and depending on how tall you are, I mean, this space is really valuable. So in my opinion, you know, half inch to an inch and a half is probably your range. But sometimes if you put this in with the drain, you're starting to 
uh, have this in, an area of your van that's not insulated. Doesn't make that big of a deal, but um, just know to to recess something in the floor, you're gonna have to sacrifice uh, ceiling height. And then here's another one that uh, just nice, clean, and closed. I like that. They, these seem to be really popular versus, you know, a big shower because you lose all of that countertop space that you have when uh, you have something like this. So moving on, we have hidden table. So I went with the lagoon table on this one because, uh, you know, it's something that you can buy ready to go, but you can also completely disassemble it and move it out of the way. You can put it under um, like a little secret storage area or like a rack behind the driver's seat, for example. Um, some other hidden tables uh, besides the lagoon you can kind of pick up and take out of the way are ones that pull out. And so we'll talk about uh, slider tables because we actually have a thing right down here. Not only deck system will be a slider, and then the sliders are your best friend topic as well. Uh, but, I mean, this is just like a standard go-to for a table you can hide. Um, yeah, when we get down here to the decked drawer system and the sliders are your best friend, we'll talk more about sliders. Uh, fold-down table system. So the fold-down table system is right here. So this is in my, my van. And what I did was I took a stainless steel cabinet door from Ikea it was in the uh, like kind of clearance area. I just thought it was cool for something in the future. Well, it turned out that I could use it uh, for a cool table. So again, these are the locking hinges. Um, they're used in a lot of marine application applications, but you can get them not chrome. You know, this is just these are black, but they have two fingers underneath here that you click, and the table folds down out of the way, and. The hinge itself has quite a bit of resistance when it folds in, so you don't necessarily have to have like a magnet or a latch to hold it down. Uh, mine just under uh, uh, whatever clearances that it has, it holds itself down. Um, but I use it all the time. If I'm in the van, I want to edit some photos or just get on my laptop or, you know, if I make breakfast and have some coffee, I can flip it up. It's there. I can fold it down. It's out of the way. And it's just a really simple thing. Now, you can use this for inside the van. You can use it um, for an extension of your kitchen countertop. You can use it for an outdoor uh, platform to put your induction stove on. So if you see some vans, they have it where uh, as the sliding door opens, there's an area where the, this can fold up or sometimes they have it fold down. Um, so next we have shoe holder and a couple different things you can do on this. Um, in a second, we'll, we'll go over, let's see here, where it has shoe organizers at the bottom. Um, this and the shoe holder are kind of the same thing because what we're talking about is basically these mesh pockets that can go in different locations of your van. And there's about three scenarios. So uh, one thing that you can do is have something like this. And so this company is uh, RB Components. Uh, no affiliation, but they make systems like this for vans. So you can go the DIY route, which in a minute I'll show you, which is an, it's an Amazon link that has, I mean, they're just basically like shoe holders for your home, like your home closet in your house. But you can repurpose it for your van. Or your DIY build. If you need something that's a little bit more rugged, um, you know, made up with a little bit more 
like kind of type like a like hiking material or some like that ballistic nylon type of stuff, um, you're looking at something like this. Uh, but what's cool is the RB components, um, they're van specific. So this one, for example, is Sprinter van. And you can choose driver side, passenger side. But these are a little bit more beefy. You know, it wouldn't be an, an Amazon bag. But that might not be what you need. So you can go like this or you can go a different route. So when we get down to mesh, mesh pouches, we'll talk about that too. Um, so moving on down, we've got under the under the bed platform. So under the bed platform, let's go down here. So sometimes you're going to build a uh, fixed bed, and you'll have chambers underneath that bed to where you can have things, you know, store stuff. Now you can use anything like you know Rubbermaid crates. You can use um, all kinds of stuff uh, instead of actually uh, crates and stuff like that. You know, you can open that chamber up so that one is the like Rubbermaid stuff, and one side would be you can put bikes and stuff like that in there. So building some type of uh, storage system under the bed is just one of the best uses of space. Um, and I wanted to give you a, more of a kind of residential visual for the under the bed pat platform. Uh, Cause you've probably seen this stuff on, uh, you know, Amazon, but essentially what you're doing is you're, you're using this underneath side of the bed. And I've actually seen people that if they have like a dinette table arrangement, um, they may have a bed that is on hinges and where they can actually lift the bed up to access their storage underneath the bed. Um, but I think this example here shows you um, just how much room is under the bed. This area is also known as the garage. So if everybody talks about, you know, this, I have a garage in my van, you know, it's pretty much the space underneath the van. Um, in a second, we're going to go through, after we go through these topics, and we're going to hop on over to, uh, we're going to go back through this uh, bend trip that we did. So in another live stream, we went through and we took a bunch of photos of vans. And what's cool is we were looking at the design and aesthetics of the van, but now we're going to repurpose these photos. We're going to go back through them, and we're going to point out the storage solutions that apply to this list that we're actually talking about right here. Um, so a better example of the under-the-bed under bed platform is in some of those photos. Then we have overhead storage bins. So... Again, some of these are products, some of these are photos. This happens to be a product, Flatline Vanco. Um, this 48 inch upper cabinet and this 24 inch upper cabinet, um, I'm gonna be using those in a future build. So if we click on the 48 inch upper cabinet, this is a kind of one and done solution for overhead storage. It's really nice because if you're not good with making, if you're not a good carpenter or you don't want it to uh, worry about something that's not strong, um, build quality, that sort of thing. You know, this is just an excellent solution. Uh, when we were actually, let's see if I can go to, uh, let's go to um, a video I had the other day. So Venture Van Expo, we talked to Richie in Richie's van. Where's Richie? Okay. So Richie's van, he has two, he put he put two of those in his van. So these uh right above his head right here, this is Flatline Vanco 48 inch um upper cabinets. 
They're bamboo. They got some vents on the top, which is really nice. But inside, we've talked about this on a couple streams, but inside, you're going to see that um, it's shallow enough so that you can walk around the van and it's not cumbersome. Um, but it does provide enough room to be an adequate use of storage. Uh, now for the profile right here, that is an adventure wagon angle. It's more specifically the Sprinter adventure wagon install angle. However, it uh, there'll just be a slight gap if it's used in a Ford Transit. Um, but I don't think it's... Uh, what I've been told is it's nothing crazy. But right here, uh, it comes with L-Track hardware. So let's just say you don't have L-Track hardware but you wanted to mount it inside your van. Depending on how you did your ceiling or like the ribs of the van, you'd be able to use a, um, like a plus nut or a rib nut and tap in like a 5 16th 18 thread pitch, which is pretty much what this uh, is using. And that way you can repurpose this bolt, um, maybe get like a socket head cap screw type of thing and then bolt this up into that rib nut and use these cabinets they're expensive I, I know that but they're um they're powder coated aluminum they've got the latches and they got the bamboo face with the hinges so if you're on a time crunch or you just don't want to deal with the carpentry aspect of it this this is a great option now, you can also always go with building your own cabinet. Um, but overhead storage, uh, let's see what we, specifics here. Yeah, the low sitting area. If you look at Richie's van, you notice that there's like a little seat underneath here. So it's good to be, um, cognizant of uh, underneath this area so that when you do build the storage, um, it fits. And yet you can paint match them, that type of stuff. But I like this because it's just a, it's a nice clean, clean look, easy to go. All right, we got flip top storage bench. So <laughs> this is kind of a bad example. I'm glad I brought up Richie's uh, <laughs> video because um, the point I was trying to make with this uh, excellent, just amazing Google search, right, is um, you can hinge these chambers in the side of your van and have it be like a, it's a seating area, but it's also storage. Um, and just like the overhead storage bins, you know, if you're doing a DIY, you can, you know, paint match this stuff. It's places that you can paint because some places in your van, everything might be upholstered, but you know, this is those places where you can, you know, put a pop of color like on the cabinets and then this bench, for example. Um, and then over here, I'm wondering if we get a good look at it. Yeah, we do. It is right See, we hop over, I think this is it. So over here on the right-hand side, uh, he's showing us this um, area and he's got storage underneath there. Here we go. So imagine this top part. So he has drawer systems, but these, these drawers are, uh, this would be part of the slider topic on this article. And these sliders right here, you know, they're drawers essentially. The slider over here for the uh, porta potty. Um, these are kind of known as the hundred pound, five hundred pound drawer sliders. So they're extremely heavy duty kind of commercial uh, drawer slide. 
and you can repurpose them for all kinds of stuff. You can use it for this, which I'm going to like pull out trays where I'm going I'm to show you this in just a second. Um, you can repurpose it for, you know, portable toilets because remember, you're going to be sitting with all your weight, the way the toilet and the drawer on these uh, drawer slides and it needs to withstand that weight. Um, and then also people make um, drawer systems out of these drawer slides that can accommodate bikes. So they can put a mountain bike on them and they can slide it all the way in, all the way out. But imagine this bench for this particular topic of the article, uh, the flip top storage bench, where this mat, uh, this cushion is on a hinged board. And essentially it can open up and close. All right, we're gonna get to under bed drawers. So if we go to under bed drawers, you can do all kinds of stuff. So you can, like this uh, Richie's van, these drawers, you can pretty much put anywhere in the van. Um, if you're more on a, uh, I would say a DIYers budget, you can just go classic, kind of like Rubbermaid bins that are, um, Sometimes you can buy the ones that are like have wheels on it. I've seen that. And they pull in, pull out. You can use regular mermaid storage bins. You can use plastic crates, you know, milk cartons, um, milk crates. Uh, you can kind of get, you know, vintage here. You have some uh, like wooden crates. You can pretty much turn anything into a drawer as long as you put like some felt stuff on the bottom and slide it. Uh, you know, believe it or not, some people actually build drawers in vans and they put uh, the, that um, it's a real thick felt. So it might be like an inch and a half thick and it's, you know, six feet long. And they put that felt on both sides of these wooden drawers that they make. So there's no hinges and there's no wheels on the bottom. It's just kind of like a friction fit and then it slides on the, the bottom of the floor. And, uh, you know, it's quiet. There's not a lot of moving parts to break. Um, there's, I mean, there is none. And I've seen some of those before. Uh, here's a good, you know, big drawer underneath the bed. Um, and again, I would say a lot of these are kind of like, a, you know, more budget DIY options. But, you know, there's really no rules. If, if you can repurpose stuff like a closet shoe rack, um, it just depends on, you know, what your budget is, what's your style, where you're trying to go, but you can do, you can do all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, simple stuff from like Walmart, you know, like Target. I mean, get creative with it. Because again, what I'm going to do is after we get done through this list, we're going to hop on over to the Venture Van Expo photos and we'll show you some professional builds in what solutions that they use from this category. Um, storage boxes attached to doors. First company that comes to mind, no affiliation, but Owl Vans. A lot of people love Owl Vans. Um, they've really gotten into the market. Um, I've even seen them on some Winnebago Revels at the shows and, uh, and they kind of made a name for themselves. And so you'll see these uh, expedition boxes on the back of vans. And this little owl van logo. And then this is how it's mounted to the back of the van. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a structure that's bolted to the hinge system of the van. And let's see, maybe I should do that first for you guys. Here's the boxes. So we need... Um, I want to say it's called the Sherpa. Let's see here. Let's just click on this and we'll go through these photos. Maybe it'll show this system on the right here. Uh, but you need two set. You need something to mount the box to. That's essentially what I'm saying. And again, what I've said in other streams is when you work with these professional companies, I have not worked with them, but I'm saying when you look at like Renogy or some other other companies these engineering drawings are really important 
because if you see these, um, it's just nice to have them to be able to see what the dimensions are. Because a picture is nice to reference, but if you have the actual measurements, it's it's better for a, a builder. And even if you're a DIYer, if you've never done something before and you're about to spend a thousand bucks, you know, understanding that this thing sticks out um, like 15 inches and it's 30 inches high, you know, might be important. Um, so what I was trying to show you guys is there is a... There's a panel. Might be for another video. Anyway, there's a panel that this mounts to. So you guys can probably understand that. Um, underfloor drawers. This is uh, what I was kind of saying earlier. Um, you can pretty much anything that's like on a slider type of thing is a good, uh, is something good to go by. I actually kind of like this, uh, really just DIY photo here where the back of the van was like a main pullout drawer. And then inside the van, you've got one, two drawers and some extra storage. And they've actually, you know, they've thought ahead and said, Hey, this is where I'm put my power inverter type of thing. So if you're just starting out, you know, stuff like this, just very simple, kind of like a two by four grid is a good, good way to start. Um, and let's see here. So I'm going to skip broom and mesh at the moment because something that's related to the underfloor drawers is the decked drawer system. So you guys may have seen this company. They do these drawers for um, truck, uh, not tool, where's the photo? So pickup trucks. So they have these uh, drawers, they're plastic drawers and pickup trucks, and they drop right into the bed of a truck and they attach where the tie down points are in the truck. Um, and so the system, come on. So the system, you see, you can put all kinds of stuff in here. You can buy boxes to go in the box, <laughs> buy boxes for the box. Uh, and they actually have a uh, something called a cargo glide and that's like a drawer slide on the top, but it's made for really heavy cargo. And then you can kind of see this is a kind of both of their products featured in the back of this truck. Um, but guess what? If we back up, they have options here for Transit, Conline, Promaster, Chevy Express, uh, Savannah, you know, Nissan Envy. I mean, they pretty much knocked them all out. Um, uh, what's, uh, so this is not bad. What's, uh, so this would be if you again are kind of in the school of, I just want to buy a cabinet that's made. I don't want to deal with it. Or I want to buy drawers underneath the bed and I don't really want to build them. So that's kind of the, where you're at. Um, if you're in that kind of build zone, uh, my personal opinion on these drawers is they waste a lot of space because, over here where the wheel well is, uh, that's useless. You can't use these left and right sides. Um, this middle channel um, is pretty wide, two or three inches. And I know you're saying like, well, Nick, what am I going to put in two and three inch gap? Well, the thing is, add the thickness of this wall of all the drawers, the so one, two, three, and four, plus the two to three inch gap, and you're getting up to like eight or nine inches. So... It's a quick solution, but um, I think they're a little clunky because uh, they use wheeled rollers. Um, so th they're originally purposed more for like contractor, electrician, HVAC type of stuff, you know, sharp, uh, you know, like screwdrivers, pipe wrenches, you know, box cut, like they're, it's more rugged. So, you know, doing RV camping and stuff like that, you're probably going to put, you know, clothes or like a tire inflator or maybe a little bit of tools. Um, but you're probably not going to put, uh, the original purpose in here, 
But again, it's a quick solution. It's ready to go. Um, you can buy it, have it shipped right to your house. So it might be an option for you if it's a good fit. Um, so let's go to broom holders. <laughs> I had to think twice about this one um, because you're not really going to have a broom closet in a van. You need some type of broom in your van to sweep out the dirt and dust. That is, that's like a van life 101. But you need something to clean your van out. Um, but you can use this for other things. So, for example, I found this one on Amazon that I think is a it's a more suitable option for a, like a an org, a broom type mop organizer. Um, because it has these hooks on it. So you can hang stuff on here and click in like many, many broom handles and sticks like that. Um, but I did the original size here because there are some people that have tall vans and they actually have like a, a dedicated closet. And I have seen people with full size brooms and uh, I mean, maybe a shovel. I've actually seen a shovel in a van. So something to think about. You know, it, cl it clamps it in, holds it, um, so it's not clanging around all over the place. Um, and then mesh pockets. So this is kind of with the shoe organizers that we talked about and the shoe holder. So these mesh pockets, um, so in our article we talked about, let me refresh my mind. Um, so here we're more talking about there's these uh, these mesh bags that you can put stuff in, and you can actually put them in a mesh bag and then store them in like uh, a, a cabinet or something like that. Um, some of these mesh pouches are like they're fluorescent colored, so you can like see them see on the inside of them in the dark. I've seen that too. Uh, and then the mesh, you know, for your fruit fruit basket, like the mesh hammock. It's always a little style, piece of style in the van on YouTube. Everybody has the uh, <laughs> the fruit hammock. Um, but the uh, what I wanted to show you guys about the, the pouches or the, the mesh pouches, um, you can kind of level up on this and get, uh, I guess, more tactical is where I'm kind of coming from. And so uh, there's a lot of mesh stuff like this. Um, let's, let me just go here. Since our article is more focused on this. see here so like these uh, these honeycomb bags right here so stuff like this but much bigger I've seen these before so they're kind of like these hampers but they're it's a mesh bag I mean, this is getting close. This is getting closer to it, um, but it's it's they're bags that you can see through. So if like everything's got underwear in it, or socks, or t-shirts, you can throw it all up into your overhead storage. But you can see through the bag to see what's in the bag. Um, that's the point I was trying to make for mesh pocket pouches. Um, but then I went on a little. Uh, had a little thought about uh, Molly pouches when I heard pouches, because I like Molly pouches because Molly is a standardized like loop system. So anything you buy that is uh, Molly has these uh, straps on the back of it, and you can see here and see here like like there's first aid kits, but see these little loop these uh stitched parts. So it's a standardized stitching. And what it's going to do is allow you to connect bags together 
or you can have a um, it's called a Molly panel for vehicles and you know you can kind of think of like police officer type of thing where he's got all his <laughs> they got grenades on here <laughs> that's ridiculous um, but <laughs> you get the point that was completely random <laughs> uh, here's a better example so I like this you can go the kind of shoe organizer back of the seat but I mean if you want to get you know Overland-esque I would go with this right here this uh, tactical seat back it's awesome because like um, you don't all have to you can buy this as a kit but if you bought the panel like I was showing you guys right here <laughs> with the grenades <laughs> that's so hilarious you can put this panel in your van God, I can't get my straight face uh, and you can buy all kinds of stuff for it and then right here they even have it for visors so I think this is a really cool storage solution if you have the, the Molly panel itself um, yeah, hey, you know, fire extinguisher in a van. That's very important. Um, but this may have kind of kind of opened your eyes that, you know, there's other stuff out there. You don't have to make it look like a military van, but um this stuff is so functional. You know, it I personally think it's way better than something like this. Um this is cool if you're just kind of getting into it, you want to try it. But uh, when you get into this stuff, um, it's a little bit, uh, it's going to last you a little bit longer, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, and the last thing that we had over here was the shoe organizer. But I told you that um, you can try it because, I mean, hey, if you got kids and you got a rear facing seat, um, in your van or like an additional seat. Uh, they actually have these built-in iPad holders and stuff like that. So might be an option for you. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of stuff here. Um, we'll be updating this with uh, some just awesome photos for you guys to uh, just reference for some ideas. So I got a couple... Uh, it's a little on my homework here to uh, just get some perfect photos for you guys. And that is a good segue into the photos I'm going to show you. So if you guys remember, we went to Adventure Van Expo in Bend, Oregon. And then we went in Nashville, uh, or sorry, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And... We got to see vans. And so what we're going to look at here is we're just going to quickly go through. And you guys can, now that you have the understanding of some creative ways to store things in your van, you can now have a different uh, viewpoint on where or, or what you're looking at. So you're looking at overhead storage. This one is 80-20. Um, so that's what I you know, built Thomas's overhead storage with. It's very strong and uh, easy to modify. Right here we have some doors and cabinets with these uh, plastic marine slam latches. Might be something you guys are into. Um, some people have the push button, but I like the marine slam latches. And check it out. If we look really close... What do we have? We got an L track just sitting right here with a little adjustable um, ring on it. And your overhead storage can actually be open. So we got some bungee cords holding everything back so you can still see, access what's in there visually. Or you can visually, visually see what's in there that you want to access. This fan has two sliders that we talked about. 
And if you follow some other streams, you'll see that this little blue knob means it's a locking drawer slide. Um, so if you're looking for drawer sliders, make sure it has like a yellow, red, or a blue cap because this is the mechanism that unlocks the drawer so it can be pulled out. You want the drawer slides to actually have these locks on it. So Titan Vans here, they've got overhead storage with the push button. So we don't have anything underneath this platform here, but you, this is where you could do that sliding storage, you know, stuff from like Target, whatever, and or like Rubbermaid bins and create a storage system underneath the van. Um, they have little cubbies. They have pillows in here, but you can put pretty much whatever you want, but they're utilizing this over the wheel area. And see, um, there's just this, this little nook on top of the uh, the kitchen area, and it's protected by some uh, some bent metal, some like polished, maybe that's aluminum. They have marine slam latches. That's what these are for drawer storage. And again, see they're utilizing utilizing the underside of this bed for storage as well. Now here is a perfect example. So we have a venture wagon. This is their booth. They've got two of their Moab beds. But then down here, check it out. We got a flatline Vanco uh, pull out drawer system. So this system, um, you can actually right here. So this is what it looks like. It's a bit pricey, but it's like I said, it's ready to go. You can put your bikes on it. And uh, it actually has a little, I guess it's a drain spot. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so adventure wagon. And then we have some other stuff here. So this is that Winnebago Revel. And I wanted to see. Let me see if I can find, I'm trying to see if I took a picture. We'll come back to that. Over here on the left-hand side, we have a flip-up countertop solution. Got to entertain the German Shepherd. Then we got more overhead storage. And I want you to notice, see how far that the microwave comes out? It's important to be cognizant of how far back your cabinets are. Because, let's see, if you see my head. So say I'm going to uh, cook some food. I don't want the cabinet to be like in the same plane as my countertop. <laughs> because... If I go to like cook some eggs or bacon, I'm gonna naturally kind of walk up and I'm gonna hit my face right into the, the cabinet. So cabinets and vans are set back just a little bit so that you can utilize the countertop space if, if it's on top of the countertop space. Um, some are not, but it's a good rule of thumb to do that. See, another flatline Vanco pullout. It's nice. It's, it's funny looking back at these photos because, I mean, I took these photos and, you know, there's still so much in these photos to talk about. Right there we have underneath the under cabinet storage. So what they've done is this is uh you guys can see here they got all this stuff uh, routed out 
to be used for underneath. So that's not a good example. There we go. A perfect example. So what we have is we have our water system area over here, but notice it's a cabinet door where you could still store stuff on the left. And then we've got a drawer slider system in the bottom here. And see, these are yellow. So I'm, I'm just showing you what I know. Some are yellow, some are blue. But these little things sticking out, uh, you definitely want that. Because some you can buy, they don't have those locking ones, and they have like a almost like a friction stop. But if you slam on the gas or hit the brake, they could open up. Um, this is really popular for storage. So right here is like a little cubby area for shoes. Um, like hiking shoes, flip-flops, stuff like that, makes use of this uh, step space. And um, so this is Van Speed's van. They have a countertop extension that folds up. Very nice cabinetry up top. And they have storage down here at the bottom, as well as, uh, I believe, one of these sides opens up. Got a lagoon table. I mean, they're really checking off the boxes here in this van. Oh, here's an example. So see, some people actually have a very tall cabinet. So you could fit a broom in there. Um, we got drawers down here, drawers underneath the fridge. Cabinets, more cabinets. Again, notice how these, uh, this is a storyteller. So notice how these cabinets are they're really low profile. So they're high, but they're low profile. Um, you can also tell by the microwave. Um, so that's so that when this is flipped up, they're not sticking out into the van. It also gives you more of a sense of space. You are losing storage area, but just visually it doesn't seem so cramped. And these are just push button. Um, so Elementum has use sliders here for the bed as you can look on the left here say so a slider system so we got a slider system here and then over here on the left right hand side and so what that's allowing him to do is fold this bed system out, pull this bed system out and fold it down to, to make a mattress area. So one, it helps him access the battery system, but also it repurposes in, uh, I believe the bed pulls out, I think that's what he did, pulled the bed out and folded it back down. We have cabinets back here in the back. We got a little storage caddy in here for shampoo and stuff like that in the shower. And then the kitchen cabinets. And then right here, you've got a double drawer. So one of these is like, uh, this is a very, very good job that they did. So this drawer is an ex table extension that comes out, and the top drawer is actually a silverware drawer. So really making use of that space. Good storage solution. So back here in the back, we got storage for snowboards, bikes, and then some shelving on the left-hand side. Um, overhead. So overhead here, you see we have over this overhead over the uh, driver and passenger shelf. Um, I know Van Wyve components used to make a really good one that everybody enjoyed, but I don't think they make that anymore.
And the back here, uh, this is their in-house, so Elementum Adventure vehicles. But see, they're making their their own uh, little bag storage system. So for the rear door, just like RB Components did. Then we got a flip up shelf or and the little box down here at the bottom to put your shoes in. Again, slider. So you can kind of see like a common theme because these are, you know, these are selling features to these professional vans. This is stuff that, um, you know, customers enjoy. So really good ideas. So that van speed made this, it's kind of like an owl van system where they have a back plate that they can bolt boxes or like stuff like this to. Here we got a lot of drawers, storage, storage, flip up table, flip up chair over here on the right hand side. So check that out. So I have one of these and I'm gonna use it, but not only does it flip up as a chair, but it has a, a table that slides out of the back of it. So my version has these extra rails on the back that hold a uh, detachable table. More drawers, cabinets. Throw all these photos. Gotta enjoy Ben while you're there. Um, there it is. So this is a fold down table. So it doesn't have to lock into place. They've actually repurposed um, like a bit of L track so that if you're on a slight of a gr like a slight grade you're still able to level out this uh, cooking surface. And this is on a Winnebago Revel. Um, Winnebago doesn't have too many storage solutions here. So these, there's a couple drawers, there's like two. This is like a little half drawer. I don't know if you could even call this one a drawer. They have one cabinet up here and one cabinet over here but you do get that full size shower. Um, CA Vans, they make a lot of great uh, storage solutions as well. So here's that deck system I was telling you guys about. Um, so you can see what my kind of gripe was that this area from here is uh, not used as well as over here on the right hand side. And then look at the middle. Do you see how much of the middle is kind of wasted? So you would do better as a DIYer but just building your own box, in my opinion. Unless you want to get this and just kind of get rolling. Got some storage on the bottom here. So this is Thomas's van. I wonder if I took any pictures on the inside. So in Thomas's van up here on the top, we have slider doors. So if you guys, um, if you looked in our blog post right here, where is it? Sliders are your best friend. Um, keep a campaign fun functional with storage cupboards on sliders for spices, pantry. So this is, yeah, that, that is an excellent example right here. So this is um, that Riga Hex Apply. And what I did is I bought this uh, sliding channel from 8020 and it snaps into the 8020 itself and provide you, uh, it defaults to, I think it's a three channel, 
So you could have like one, two, you could have three cascading doors, for example, if you had a long place to, um, you wanted sliders for. But we did this in Thomas's van, and that way we don't have to worry about latches and stuff like that. It's just nice, clean, simple. And he actually bought uh, that Van Wife component shelf up here um, when they had had it. And what I did was I upholstered it. And so I upholstered all the metal components in it. Um, that was kind of a little bonus there, so I, I surprised him with that. <laughs> I was like, it has to be covered, and so I covered it. Um, and then in his kitchen galley, what I've done is I've got two marine slam latches here. Um, and then this one on the left-hand side, I'm hoping I got a picture in here. That one on the left-hand side is a pull-out pantry. And that's where he keeps his Keurig, coffee cups, and stuff like that. Um, it was very, um, because of what he needs uh, his van for, um, we have very limited storage options. Uh, so right here, okay, this is a better look. So this whole entire top area is over the kitchen. Um, and then when under here we have all the, uh, I know I got a better picture here. Well, we can go back to that later. Uh, let's see, any more storage? Here we go. Perfect, perfect. So this was a van in Chattanooga. Um, this is a great photo for storage options. We have the locking sliders. You see how these blue things sticking out? So it may look tacky from a first glance, but then when you kind of get into this RV industry, van life type of thing, you get excited when you see this because you're like, oh man, that's a hefty drawer slide. You know, you can click on that. Uh, no joke, if these are the 500, 500 pound rated slides, you know, you could pull this table out in your van and just like sleep on it. <laughs> it's it's that strong, I'm telling you. Um, then up here, they've got some great, uh, this is Contra vans. And so they have uh, simple hinges um, with some little strut here to hold the door open and closed. And uh, yeah, just nice, clean, fixed bed. I don't think I took a picture in the back of that one. Oh, that was the okay. This is the back. So they're back. They don't have um, don't get too much storage going on. But this is also uh, yeah, it's smaller. Here we go. Here is a drawer slide system. So you can see how aggressive you can get. I mean, you can get these really deep um, sliders that extend way far out. Um, this fan's nice. Bunch of drawers, a lot of drawers. Here is a little DIY shoe rack holder. That's pretty cool. I actually don't know how they did that. Hmm. Trying to think how those shoes are being held on there. I should have asked them. That's crazy. Look at that. Looks like they're all floating. Making use of bungee cords. Nice. And I think that's it. All right. Let me pull this back up. So in closing here, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put those in the chat right now. I'm just going to start to close out the stream for tonight. Yeah, Daniel, bungees. Um, bungees are nice because you can cram stuff in there, but also you can like visually see uh, what's behind it. It's so like the bungee nets. I like I like the bungee nets. So as far as camper van space saving tips, 
make use of hidden spaces. Uh, I saw this picture off of a Wayfair van, and I was trying to find something that showed a good example of a wheel well being area being utilized, and so they they had the best photos. So you can kind of see their, how they're utilizing that space around the wheel well. Um, they're doing a they're doing a really great great job doing that. Really making use of that space, and then see now you can actually use it as a bench to sit on. It's got top access, side access, so I like that one. Um, sliders are your best friend. Again, pull out slider. It's like flat. Flatline Vanco is showing you here. Bikes. Yeah, pretty, pretty awesome. Yep, and there you go. So that way you could actually pull it out and like wash the bikes down and let it drain out. I think that's what that's for. Um, yeah, let's talk about a little bit of minimalism. So rotating winter and summer clothing. Um, I know when I go hiking or I'm taking the van to meet up friends, I'll put some, you know, shirts and stuff under the sink because under the sink I have a uh, shirt rack and then a clothes rack. Um, but then when it gets to the winter time, I'll just go ahead and put my jackets and extra stuff in there. That way, if I need something extra, it's already in the van and I don't have to worry about packing it. Um, and next is removing anything unnecessary. Again, really kind of get down to the minimalism. Think about, you know, all the stuff that you're going to need to take for a trip and then look at that pile of stuff and then see, like, what can you pare down, down from that. And I just put minimalism, minimalism in here because um, we go over a couple things here in the bottom. Um, and it's uh, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> cleaning out your closet type of stuff or like cleaning out the fridge, but it really comes down to, I think minimalism would be a good example. And once again, we are putting together these articles on the website, which is now live. So vanbuilderhq.com. And so this is the post. So clever storage hacks and solutions for a DIY van conversion. And these are just uh, all the topics that we showcase today in this live stream. And like I said, we're going to take those photos from the uh, Adventure Van Expos that we've gone to and um, some other stuff. And we'll put them in there because we think those are the best examples of stuff that we've seen uh, you know, recently. They're at the shows, and um, uh, yeah, we like them. So look forward for those photos to come out. Go ahead and visit the article, and you guys can read through, go a little bit more in-depth, though I think we've gone pretty in-depth in this live stream. Um, and then over on the right-hand side, Odyssey Custom Vans. So that is me. If you guys are interested in a professional build, this is my website. If you'd want to reach out to me personally, just go over to the contact page. Put your information in and your message. You know, Tell me your story. Tell me what you are looking forward to an adventure van build and be happy to get on a call with you. We can Skype, Zoom, um, and talk about, talk about your plans. But yeah, that is it. Looks like we don't have any questions in the chat. Uh, but look out for us tomorrow. Hope to see you guys tomorrow here. We'll have another topic about camper van conversions, DIY van conversions, um, all that stuff. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.